Hello everybody, welcome to another watercolor tutorial. Today's tutorial is a winter mountain that is inspired by Akan Shah's art. Um, I'm a little nervous about this because I believe, yeah, she definitely used either oil or acrylic for hers. Uh, so I'm going to have to kind of go backwards almost. Um, and painting this just trying to figure out where to start and how to tackle this but we are going to hmm, start with the sky let's start with blue because we can always paint on top of that mountains are darker than the sky so let's let's try that somebody did ask at one point uh on one of my videos to include the uh what do you call it to include the finished product, like the finished painting, before I start the tutorial so that you know what to expect. And I, I can understand why that would be appealing to some people, but I don't paint my tutorials, like I don't practice them before repainting them. So that's, I, and I realize I can just edit it. So like show, show the finished product in the beginning after I edit it, but that's just not my style. And uh, I hope that you guys are okay with that. Sorry, so I've taken blue. I started with a darker blue and then I kind of transitioned into a Unfortunately, it has a green tint. This is the problem I have with so many of my tutorials. <laughs> I used green in a previous tutorial, or it could be from the tape that I reused. And uh, it unfortunately comes through. So I'm just arching this. This is about a little more than halfway down, about two thirds down. And I'm arching this because she has used acrylic paint, I believe, in her painting. And so she could paint this white. She can paint over top of it. We could use acrylic paint, um, but we can't do it to completion because you can't paint watercolor over acrylic paint. So it would have to be as like a finished thing. Um, nonetheless, let's just start with our sky, which we have. I'm going to let the sky dry i'm just debating what to do maybe we can apply like a gray instead of a white because she didn't it's not completely white what she is using um since i can see the white paper underneath or like to the sides of her painting so i'm going to take it even looks like there's a little bit of green in that so anyways um i'm just going to paint that it's like i i combined blue green and gray together to get this color but don't get too fussy you should really let this dry before connecting the two because you don't want the blue to start fading into the bottom part but um, I'm a bit impatient, as you guys should already know if you watch my tutorials regularly. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. Let's let this completely dry, and then we can make it start looking like something. Okay, so I believe this is dry. Uh, oh gosh, where do we start now? Where do we start? Um, I'm going to take just my bigger brush, my size 8, for this next part. And I want to start with just a nice simple brown. And then we can always lighten things, or sorry, darken things after. Okay, 
So we're going to start painting our mountains now. Um, I'm just, I don't really know where to go with this. So I'm painting this for the first time. That's my style. I don't practice my paintings before filming a tutorial. Most of the time it works out for me, but oftentimes it does not. Uh, and the reason I do that is because I do not wish to spend the time figuring out Sorry, I don't wish to spend the time painting a tutorial twice. If this was my career, then maybe I'd experiment with that to see if it translates into more successful tutorials. But uh, that is a lot of time and I commend all the YouTubers that paint with watercolor that do that, like, kudos to you. But I don't have time for that. I don't want to make time for that. I am just, okay, sorry. So just so you can see kind of what I'm doing here, I'm trying to make certain parts lighter and other parts darker um, to reflect kind of how the light is shining and it's a little challenging to do that. Uh, so I know this doesn't look like very much at the moment and I'm hoping that that will change once this is complete. So the reason why I'm not really explaining what I'm doing is because I don't know what I'm uh, painting at the moment. Um, I'm just seeing how this works out. So basically it's a mountain that's on top of, like this is the peak of a mountain and everywhere else is snow and whatnot. So, and I should have painted this in landscape because now I don't have enough room for all of the other like side peaks that there are supposed to be in this painting. Um, but you'll live and you'll learn. So this side's darker because it is to this, sorry, it's in the shade, like the sun is coming from this angle and this is supposed to be kind of hollowed out. Um, reminds me a little bit of the Dolomites, which are it's like an alpine region in, in northern Italy. If you guys ever get a chance to go there and you are kind of nature hiker type people, then, well, I mean, you probably already know about this then, but that is um, definitely one of my favorite destinations in general. It's, I love hiking in the Alps, but the Dolomites are really something else. I'm gonna have a, lo a little peak coming over here. You can't really see it. It's gonna go off the page, but just adding a little something extra there. Um, yeah, I am not really happy with how this is turning out. I hope this is one of those times where it looks kind of horrible while you're painting it, and then as you add all the details, it just comes together. Because right now it's just brown and doesn't look much like anything. Um, I 
so this is like the peak not the peak but the the ridge of the mountain and you want to have things coming off on both sides that's how it looks like a ridge if things are kind of going down a little bit I do want to retry this with acrylic paint. I think it would look really cool with acrylic paint. Um, I'm just adding some rocky details sticking out from the snow. Um, we can even add like a boulder or something coming out here. I don't really know what that's supposed to be. You don't want anything to look too geometric. Like these, it's supposed to be very rocky and rough and rigid. So just uh, what I'm doing is I have my brush um, sort of horizontally to the paper and I'm just dabbing it and letting the brush naturally make these rigid brush strokes. So what I want to do here next is start adding some more details that are going to make this look a little bit nicer. So I'm taking a very light colored watercolor maybe even gray would have worked or i'm gonna pick up some white watercolor this isn't completely dry so i actually can't really do what i want to do maybe i should just wait for it to dry and that is not my forte people waiting for things to dry is challenging for me so these little parts are drier, so I'm just gonna work on those then in the meantime. I'm gonna add a little bit of black to my brown, and I'm gonna start adding kind of shadowy sections. So if our sun is coming from this side, I'm adding them to the right side and a little bit on the bottom of the little rocky formations um, and hopefully by doing so these will start to look a little bit nicer or more realistic so this whole side over here is going to be in the shade or at least most of it so we want to make it darker than this side um, we're actually going to add like shading coming off of this and unfortunately because this is in portrait I cannot paint it in the way that I would have liked to but that's a mistake that you can now see me make and not make the same like you can a lot of people they watch the tutorial first and then they attempt it which is a fantastic idea I, uh, because then you see what I've done wrong because often because I don't pre um, paint and then adjust I fix a lot of things as I go in my tutorial and uh, if you're just following along from the first time then you might get just as frustrated as me because you're like ah oh, why didn't you tell me that this was gonna be a mistake or that this was gonna be fixed um, or you can view it as a very good learning opportunity. It's funny when people say things like, oh, it was a happy mistake. Um, I'm like, no, I'm never happy when I make mistakes. I'm always very annoyed. Uh, we can turn those mistakes into things, but I'm never happy in the moment. I'm usually quite annoyed at myself. I really don't want to wait for this to dry, so I think I'm just going to start going for it. So I want to make this part darker. Um, 
some of these parts are also going to be darker. We're even going to add some black in there. So I'm just adding these vertical uh, lines, basically, to make this look aggressive. And I'm not using too much water because I do want this to be quite dark and opaque. And I'm going to add a little bit of shadow work here. But this is mostly going to be, I'm going to take another brown color. It's more, it's not a brown, I don't really know what color this is. But yeah, as you make these vertical stripes, it kind of naturally adds texture to the mountain. Uh, I'm going to quickly grab some black and add that in some areas while it's still wet. And that way it'll kind of really nicely mix in instead of standing out alone. And then I'm going to take some white and apply it to the areas that I want it because it's the white will sort of mix with the surrounding colors since they're still a little bit wet. It'll turn it into a tan color, which is exactly what I want. It sort of adds highlights to certain areas. I really wanted this whole circled area to be much brighter. Something is not right. I can't quite figure it out. But something is missing here. Or, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with, with these mountains. Just, it's it doesn't look 3D enough. And I can't figure out what it is that's making it look like that. But I think I'm just going to leave it before, before I do something I really don't like. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a darker, uh, maybe like a bluish color, a bluish gray almost, and it's going to be watered down. 
because it's going to be the um, shading portion on this side. So all of this, whoops, I might try a smaller brush, but hold on. So all of this is going to be in the shade. So like this and like this. And then we can also add that same shading to some of these rocky features as well. Not anything crazy. And again, angling your brush horizontally and just kind of letting it do its thing, it creates a very natural look rather than, you know, a uh, well-rehearsed look, if that makes any sense. This does not look like much of anything. I am going to be honest, I am not entirely happy with this. But, I mean, what are you gonna do? It's a learning experience, I suppose. It's just these mountains, there's something, I can't get the texture quite right. There's just something off and I can't figure out what it is. Maybe we can add snow to make it nicer looking, I don't know. I'm gonna just quickly switch here to my, my double zero and what am I doing? I am picking up some brown and I'm just at, it's a darker brown and I'm just going over some areas. I'm gonna mix a little bit of black in there as well. Just to make it a little more dramatic. Sometimes these random details add a lot to a painting, like very thin, sporadic little uh, brush strokes. So that's what I'm trying to do. Maybe it'll do something. Just making things look a little bit more rocky. And adding uh, black to a lot of these things also makes them look nicer or makes them look like you put more effort into it. And I'm still trying to figure out that what is wrong with this mountain. I don't know. If you guys have an idea what you would do to make this mountain a little more I, tex not textured, it just it looks. There's, there's something wrong, like, I can't quite figure it out. Maybe that's it. Maybe I have to, like, add kind of layers, stacked layers to it that are horizontal rather than just vertical. I don't know. I don't want to keep, I don't know if you even saw that. Sorry. I don't really want to keep fiddling with this because if I keep going, I think I'm just going to make it worse. But what I am going to do is see if adding any white acrylic paint onto things to make it look a bit more snowy might help. 
So just on some of these on the left side where the sun isn't hitting it, which actually kind of goes against what you would think. Typically the stuff in the shade, that's where all the snow resides because it doesn't melt as quickly as the sunny side. Um, but we're not going for realism here. We're going for a really wintry look. Maybe some snow up here in the peaks, the peaks of the peaks. All right, I am going to keep it at that. I think it didn't turn out, you know, as bad as I thought it was going to be at the beginning. It, it actually turned, adding that white really did help, adding that snow on the mountain. I think it did help. It's more of a rough look. It's not meant to be anything, uh, I don't even know what I'm trying to say. But actually, one thing I thought of that might really bring this to wintry look together is splattering some snow. So I've just taken watered down acrylic paint and I'm just making it snow. And I think that looks quite, quite nice. I am going to add some little snow, like larger snowflakes manually here. And that is, that's our painting. It actually didn't turn out too bad. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the result, I would say. So I'm just going to peel off that tape reveal nice borders and we've got ourselves a snowy mountain i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial let me know what you would have done differently what you thought of this i always enjoy reading your comments and i will see you in the next watercolor tutorial